Uh, what's up, uh, uh, YouTube brothers and, and uh, sisters in Christ? It is your boy, Charles James. And on this uh, lovely day, I want to definitely take my time with this topic because I want you all to understand exactly what what God has to say through me. And so just bear with me because I'm going to also be flipping scriptures. So that will take some time as well. But basically right off, right off from the jump, I want to let y'all know that um, involving the LGBTQ uh, uh, community, you know, a lot of people, a lot of pastors, they don't speak about this stuff. You have a lot of them that are soft and won't mention it because they are afraid that they will push those type of people away. But never forget one thing that God had people to speak against, against uh, what uh, how people were living, were uh, living their life. He had he had prophets, teachers, preachers speaking his word exactly for what God called it to be. And so as children of God, I say this over and over again, we have to do the same thing. If we are to imitate Christ, we ought to do the same thing. Stand up in, in what and what is right and what God called to be right and to be against what God is against. And so to every body that is in the LGBTQ community. I want to let you know that right off from the jump, God loves you and and God doesn't think any less of you. If anything, God wants you to turn away from your sins and to come to him. Because in God there is true freedom. Freedom from sin. You you're able to truly live a life of peace and righteousness whenever you come to Christ Jesus. So I want to get started and letting y'all know that the way that y'all are living, anybody who claim to be in that community, I want to let y'all know that you're in sin. I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'll just say it like it is because see me, I don't sugarcoat nothing. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you the bald headed truth. I ain't gotta. I ain't gotta cover up anything and pretend like I'm trying to shake or something or pretend like I'm trying to be your friend. I don't. I don't have to be your friend just to tell you the truth. I'm gonna tell you the truth whether you you like it or not. And whatever you hear, you have to understand that you have to take heed to it. Because if you don't then God will hold you accountable of what you heard, but refusing to listen to. So I understand this. When it comes to this uh, community that you are in, it is not of God. I will give you plenty of scriptures that mentions that God is against this because there are a lot of you who said that Jesus barely mentioned about the gays and the Bible and other people, how they barely mention about how there are gays in the Bible and stuff. And I want to be clear. God, he mentioned that in the Bible. That was his reason for destroying Sodom and Gomorrah. So when it comes to LGBTQ the only LGBTQ that I will only support is lettuce, guacamole, bacon, tomatoes, and quesadilla. That's the only LGBTQ that I will ever support. But I won't support lesbian, gays, bisexuals, trans, and queers. I will not support that because it is not of God. So, another thing that I want you 
all to understand is because I'm pretty sure you have heard it. I've heard it plenty of times, especially where you gay people believe you believe that you were born gay. And so children of God, I want y'all to hear this clear. Now, there's only now now when it comes to that, in a way, I believe that somebody can be born gay. But it's only to this this extent. You know how whenever uh you know women get pregnant and they are carrying a child. And so I do believe that spirits can leap off of people and jump onto to to other people. And the one thing is, if generational curses are not being cursed and destroyed, then then that seed that came from that parent will will be thrown onto onto that child that's uh, that's being formed into the womb. If that if that if that thing is not cursed down, then that child or children will end up getting uh, a demonic attacks on them. So so it's just like if if if, if uh, somebody in the family has a generational curse of a a a, a tradition of where. They're like getting high all the time. If that is not being cursed down in Jesus name, everybody else in that generation will end up repeating and doing the exact same thing. And then their children, children, and then their children, children, it, it will constantly keep repeating itself until somebody stand up in Jesus name and shut that thing down. So when it comes to being born gay, because see, uh, the Bible, uh, you know, mentions that we are all, uh, you know, born into sin and shaped into in and in, in, uh, iniquity. So right off from when we are being born into this world, we, we are already wrong. Why? Because we have not came to the knowledge of Jesus Christ and have not made that choice to be able to come to him yet. Why? Because we are still a, a uh, you know, little child. But about time that you grow up and you get the knowledge of Jesus and you know evil and good and you know these things, then you are held accountable. So if you do not, curse those generational curses, then you will end up doing exactly the same thing that your daddy did, that your, you know, uh, uh, mama did. Anybody that came before you, you will end up doing exactly what they did because those spirits were not uh, a rebuke. They were not cast down and, and ran away. So that's why it is important that whenever th there is a generational curse in your family, you have to make sure that before you even think about forming, a, well, well, uh, having a child, you need to go to Jesus. You need Jesus' help to to destroy those generational curses because you don't want that spirit leaping on to your child, and then you're wondering why your child is acting out. You have to go to Jesus and 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 do exactly what Jesus tell you to do in order for those generational curses uh, to be broken. But understand this, all gay people. You have to understand that when it comes to that, I I understand of when you're talking about being born gay off the generational curses and spirits, uh, uh you know, leaping on to you that I just explained, but. You have to understand in, in this other perspective, when God created people in, in, in anything in this world, it pleased God. It, it, it was perfect. I go back to Genesis. But you have to understand that there was no gay chromosome in your body. 
God makes no mistakes. So if God didn't create no gay chromosome inside your body, then what makes you think that you was born gay? This is, this is not possible other than what I just explained about the generational curses. But uh, uh, other than that, there's no reason why you should continue to keep saying that you were born this way and when you won't. That's why that song that uh, Lady Gaga came out with a couple, uh, 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 couple years ago saying it was a song about, it was called uh, Born This Way. And boy, I hate that song to, uh, to the core because she was lying to a lot of people. And that's how a lot of you start to believe that. And then you ran uh, with that thing. And then a lot of y'all just came out the closet. I'm here to let you know, God is not pleased with it. He is not. And unto the children of God, you have to be bold and stand up against this stuff. Because see, how is it that the gays and all these people involved in that community can come out in the world, but you're afraid to come out with the word of God. You're afraid to come out with uh, the truth of God and letting people know the hard truth uh, for them to swallow. I believe that it needs to be more Christians coming out and let, letting them know that, hey, I, I am a Christian. I, I am a child of God and I'm here to stand on of the word of God for what God called it to be. And so since God called his word to be exactly for what it is, I'm going to speak his truth. I'm going to go wherever I, I, he wants me to go and I'm going to speak the truth in Jesus name. And it needs to be more children of God who stand up and rise and take a stand. Those who won't back down, those who won't just let the the devil uh, run, run over them and just rip them apart. We need children of God who will take a stand, no matter if it, if it causes them to lose their life. Because taking a stand for righteousness is really all that, you know, matters. It is the right thing. It is the holy thing to stand up for what, Christ already said uh, to be done. So we have to make sure that regardless of the fears and regardless of the doubts and no matter who comes up against us, we have to take a stand and truly speak God's word and not sh uh, uh, sugarcoat anything uh, and, and be afraid that it will lose people in the church. See, God will give you people at, 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 after his heart. So you need not to be worried about who you will lose and who you will gain. L let, let God handle that part. You have to obey God and, and, and do what he told you to do and come out with, with his word. So let's, so to all you people who say, that that the word homosexual is in the Bible and this and that. Th there are scriptures that mention it. So it, it's just like the word rapture, how it's not in the Bible. But a lot of us Christians know that there is going to be a rapture because there are other words that, uh, that are used for it. So the same with this word. So let's go to Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 because i want y'all to understand this thing i want y'all to to see and understand where first where god is coming from so genesis chapter 1 verse 27 and it says so god created man in in his own image and in the image of god created he him male and female created he them. So that lets you know that God is, is first the creator of all things. God only has the power to really create whatever he desire. And so in this, you can see that God created 
male and female. That that is what God wanted. So that's what he did. Now, let's take it to Le Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22. Now, and now it says, thou shalt not lie with mankind. As with womankind, it is abomination. So, clearly it's saying that a man should not lay with a man and a woman should not lay with a woman. Why? Because it is not what God intended. It is not what God is pleased with. So that is self explain or is is if you just read it, it's self explanatory. Now let's turn to uh Leviticus chapter twenty, verse thirteen. It says, if a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. So as I mentioned in, in uh, ch uh, chapter eight, uh, 18, verse 22, it's basically saying the same thing. Man ought not to lay with man. And women ought not to lay with women. It is an abomination. It's something that God hates. It's something that God despises. So, in other words, if, if you are still doing the same thing, it, it is saying that you shall be put to death. And, and I know a lot of y'all like saying, oh, well, I've been doing this thing for, uh, for, for, for years and years and I'm still alive. See, the, the thing is, when it comes to to death, it's not going to get you right then. It's going to get you when you least expect it. And then on top of that, God, God is not a liar. So if you continue on doing the same thing, thinking that you're going to get away with it, or you're not. Because, see, Paul said, shall we continue in saying that grace may abound, God God forbid. So that means that you, you can't keep doing what you want to do and thinking that you're covered in God's grace to where you won't die. And then he said, for the wages of sin is death. So so if you keep allowing your, your sins to, to add up, to collect, 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 one day it will, it will go to collections. And that collections is... God judging you, and then, and then that's it. Then you are sent to hell. So that's why you, you, in anything, anytime that God puts somebody in front of you to tell you this stuff, or or whether you hear it on TV or or the uh, you know radio, you have to take heed because if you don't, then of course that blow will be on on your hands. Because of the fact that you didn't listen. And so when you died and now you're in a place spent away from God for all eternity because you refuse to listen to what God said. Now, let's turn to Romans chapter one, verse 26 through 27. Cause we, cause I'm, I'm going to get this truth out. It's already in the Bible, and that's why I, I don't understand when a lot of people fold, especially the ones that go on Oprah's show, and then they mention it. Like, if Oprah asks them a question about Jesus or anything, or it can even be about the gays, you have a lot of so-called pastors folding because. They are afraid that they will fan uh, people. And see, I'm I'm going to be honest with y'all. The truth is going to hurt either way. The truth is going to always hurt, especially if it goes against your, uh, you know, lifestyle. The truth will always hurt. And so me, if I was put in front of her, I'm not going to fold. I'm going to tell you the truth straight like it is. Because see... If I call myself a child of God, I'm going to back that up. I'm going to make sure that 
I'm doing and saying exactly what God told me to, uh, to do and say. Now, uh, to the scripture, Romans chapter 1, verse 26 through 27. It says, For this cause God gave them up into vile affections, for even their women did change their natural use into that which is against nature. So, uh, there were people even back then, women, that uh, that was that were changing their natural parents that God blessed them to have into a parents that God was not pleased with. And so what happened was, yes, in those times, whenever stuff like that would happen and it kept on, uh, uh, you know, happening, God, God would kill off those people. Because like I said, in the Bible, it, it uh, you know, mentions that whenever, uh, those sins add up and that end result is death. So in a way, in the Bible, it, it uh, you know, mentions that sin have to be cut off. There, there have been a lot of wicked generations that, that was cut off. So, and then it says, and likewise, also the man leaving the natural use of, of the woman, Burning their lusts one toward another, man, man with men. Working that which is unseemly in receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. So, it's letting you know that man was laying with men and women with women. And also how they were giving up their natural appearance. What, what God originally ordained for for them to to look like and have and they gave it up to look like something that was uh, that was totally against the nature of God that right there it it was a no-no and it still is a no-no because see God is against that now let's turn to Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5 oh i'm jumping around because i i'm giving y'all scriptures i'm letting y'all know that god ain't playing so y'all don't have to say oh it's not in there i'm i'm, I'm, I'm giving you the proof it, it's in here you just have to look you, you just have to apply yourself to the word of god and then really search the scriptures and see what god is talking about but you cannot just uh, just take these scriptures and go off of your own intellect thinking that you are right. You have to have the Holy Spirit to help you to understand what you are reading. You have to have God to help you uh, uh, search the scriptures and really understand what, what he already said. So that way you don't get twisted up and run off of, 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 of your own intellect and taking it out of context. Cause that's what's getting a lot of people. They are especially it can be any type of people. Run around in the Bible and then read a, a certain piece of it and, and, and then they wrote that thing and then they're ready to speak on it. You have to allow the word of God to, to sit in you to, to hover over you. So that way you can truly understand what God is saying. Now now um now, in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5, it says, The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Over and over again, it mentions that it is an abomination. God is against that. And so, you have to understand that Every woman out there, if you are wearing stuff that pertain to a man and, and you are uh, looking like a man, that displeases God. If you are a man and you're wearing high heels and pumps and bras and stuff, f uh, first of all, God ain't God ain't create your body uh, to be able to fit that stuff anyway. No man should be really wa walking around with with breasts and plants or breasts 
a like a woman because God ain't created us to be like that. And no woman should be w walking around with the penis because see, God ain't create you like that. So, so no woman should be wearing man's boxers, man's shoes, um, man's tank tops and stuff. If anything, wear, wear women's clothing, especially, especially something that, uh, uh, that is pleasing in the eyes of the Lord. Because see, in the Bible, it mentions about, uh, you know, modesty. So you have to be careful of how you go out and dress. The Bible is clear on that. That you have to be careful with how you dress because see, as well, that can cause people to lust after you. And so if you are, are wearing something, I don't care if you are a man or a woman, if you're wearing something too short or and it's showing your body and it's tight on you, 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 you need to change it. Because see, if it's causing other people to lust, then you will be in trouble by God. Now, let's go to 1 uh, uh, Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. And this word right here, effeminate, I want y'all to understand this. It says 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. And it says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor, I, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. And I'm going to read on though. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. So, specifically talking about that E word, effeminate, what that word means is having or showing uh, characteristics regarded as typical of a woman. So, in other words, if you are a man, but you are acting like a female, you are swinging your hips, you, you, you're acting like a woman, that is sin. And it does not please God because it says that those type of people who practice, who do that stuff, will not inherit the kingdom of God. The same goes to, uh, to you women. If you are walking around acting like a man and doing what a man do, and you continue to do that stuff and it goes unrepented, you, it says right here, clearly in the word of God. You will not inherit the kingdom of God. So you won't even see heaven. You, 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 uh, yet long, you won't even touch heaven. So, so all these scriptures that I'm giving you is coming straight from, uh, from the Bible. It's not like I'm telling you this stuff uh, just to play with your, uh, you know, e emotions and stuff. I'm, I'm giving you strictly of the word of God for what God said it is. Now, Let's let's go back to uh, Genesis chapter two and twenty four, and, and this is the last uh, scripture. I want to say that one f f for last because it, it was a reason why I did that. Coming from Genesis chapter two, verse uh, tw uh, twenty four, and it reads. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife. It didn't say shall a man, you know, leave from his, uh, you know, mother and uh, father cleaving to uh, his husband. Because that's, cause that's not what God intended. You, you have a lot of people so-called getting, uh, you know, married that are gay and thinking that that is honoring God. Thinking that that is a right way to go when that is a lie. It, just because Obama passed that gay marriage thing and it doesn't make it right with God. It doesn't make it um okay with God. Because still, come back in the word of God and you will see God is not okay with that. And just like, uh, you know, uh, with a woman. It, it didn't say for a woman to leave 
for uh yeah a, a woman to uh, to leave from her parents and to cleave to uh her wife that's not in the bible it says therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall become one flesh you cannot become one flesh with the same sex if you are a man you cannot become one with another man because it is an abomination and it is not right in the eyes of, of the Lord. So if y'all call yourselves getting, you know, married, you think God is going to honor y'all marriage? No, the world honors it because it's the world. Oh, the world loves its own, but God will, will never approve of that. God will never honor that marriage because you have a lot of people, especially to you women. The same thing that I said about the man. God won't approve of that. If you're marrying another woman, you think God's going to approve? No. Now, I'm, I'm here to tell you the straight truth, the facts, because a lot of y'all are lied to. And then you go all these years believing and living in that same uh, uh, lie, thinking that you are in the right when you're clearly in the wrong. I just find it crazy how a lot of gay people go to get, uh, you know, married and, the, and how there are a lot of pastors okay with, with performing that ceremony and then going to have the nerve to say, we are gathered together here in holy, uh, you know, matrimony. That, there, that is nothing holy about that. That there is nothing holy about two people of the same sex getting, uh, you know, married and thinking that that is holy. That is a lie. And to any pastors out there, so-called pastors that are, you know, marrying two people of the same sex, God is going to hold you accountable for that. You know you wrong allowing them people to come up in your church and do that all because you want to get paid or all because you don't want to offend them. You're in the wrong for that. And so honestly, if you do that, you, you can't really call yourself a pastor because you know better. If you know what God is against, why are you allowing this, this type of stuff to, uh, to just happen? You, you, you shouldn't even, you need to step down and really allow God to humble you. And you need to soak yourself in the word of God daily and get his word to where, and to where you believe it and to where you receive it and to where you are, uh, you know, uh, really acting out the word of God and living it. It shouldn't be to where people fold up. Children of God are folding up on God uh, 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 trying to please uh, uh, the crowd uh, that's behind them. We are called to a higher standard. We ought not to walk around and do what the uh, what, what people of this world do, which are sinners. We are called out among from them. We are different. Jesus, he 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 set us apart from uh, from them. So we ought to walk according to how Jesus told us to walk. We are to speak according to how Jesus told us to speak. So, if anything, to all you LGBTQ uh, community people, I'm not speaking hate towards you. I'm speaking. I'm speaking all of this in love, because see, God wants you to know the truth, and I'm not about to lie to you and say what you're doing is okay. Somebody got to tell y'all. And whether I get hate mail off of this or not, I don't care. I'm still sleep good at night. I'm going to still do what I've been doing on a daily basis and, and chilling with God. I'm not going to change, change the shade all because y'all throw hate towards me for speaking the truth that's already in the Bible. So understand this. God loves you. And God wants you to change. There is no way that you can have an encounter with God. And you come out the same exact way. If anything, when Jesus said for you to come as you are, you come to him with your problems, with everything that you got going on. 
but you don't leave like how you came. Because if any man goes to Christ and he, Jesus will change his life. He will become a new man, a new creature. So that, so, so that right there lets you know that you ought not to be practicing the same thing. I understand if you're struggling in that sin, but don't stay there. Get Jesus help to, uh, uh, to, to constantly help you out of that. Because see, you just can't go to Christ and come out the same as that way. Christ is perfect in all, in every way. So if Christ is perfect, then don't think that he will do a half done, half uh, job on you. That Jesus uh, haven't done anything, half work, half effort. He done everything. Everything he did was perfect. So if anything, to those that want to come to Christ that are in that community, I encourage you to come to Christ because see, if you continue in living in that same sin that you are in, you will die in that sin. It's, it's in the Bible. If you continue, if you continue to live in that sin that goes unrepented, it says that you will surely be put to death. And so right now I'm not talking about other people and their mess. I'm talking about sp specifically this type of stuff because the LGBTQ community is rising like crazy and it needs to be shut down. Them lies, that deceitful ways of how y'all are, you know, living, it needs to be shut down because it is not right in the eyes of God. I'm not here to pound y'all on the head with, with, with Bible scripture and stuff. I'm here to, uh, uh, to, uh, to just drive out what y'all call y'all truth. I'm driving out that, that lie and coming in with the word of God, letting you all know that, hey, you need to get your act together, that you really need to live for God and not for this world. So if anything come out from your ways, and I already know a lot of y'all will refuse to do it because it's already in the word of God in Revelation, how a lot of people that God will say, depart from me. I already know, but I'm talking about those who, who who's willing, who's trying. Come out from that and trust me, be who God created you to be. Be who God called you to be. Don't, don't let what your past, what happened in your past cause you to act out and, and, and just completely go, uh, uh, you know, sideways. I understand it happened, but you need to come to Christ. Allow Christ uh, to change you. But I love you all and you all take care. Bye.